Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany. I am currently a clinical year PA student going on rotations and today's video is going to be a summary of my emergency medicine rotation. I'm going to go through basically all the things that you would want to know and then any tips and advice on what to do for your emergency rotation. I wrote down a bunch of stuff on my iPad because I knew that I wanted to make this video. At the hospital that I was at, every single week we would have a different color and that would mean that we are going to different sections of the hospital in the ED. The first week I was in green, which is critical care. Then I moved to blue, which is fast track. And then my third week was red, which is just your everyday normal emergency room. There wasn't a specific, I guess, classification for that color. And then after red, I went to pink, which is pediatrics. After pediatrics, I had purple and then gold. And then purple and gold are the same thing as red, where it's kind of a mishmash of everything and you can see a little bit of everyone and everything. So because this was my first rotation, I didn't know what to expect as a student and I also didn't know what to expect in terms of how to navigate the hospital because I've never worked in one before. Like anything like that, I've never had exposure to how the hospital works. So my first day was a lot and even the first week because I was put into critical care and these patients come in extremely sick and here I am, a first like rotation PA student literally does not even know where the bathroom is and I was so stressed. So as you can imagine, I was very confused. I didn't really know what I was doing, but that first week I think was where I basically tried to shadow a lot and just to see where things were. I would help out where needed. So if the resident or the attending that I was with needed me to do something, I would do it for them. So after the first week, I definitely got to see a lot. There were some ACLS codes. There were like a couple of intubations I got to see, which was really cool after the first week i moved into fast track and this was where i really liked it because here i got to do a lot more procedures what it means by fast track is that we can see you quickly and get you out of the emergency room without having to stay for the entire day my first day there i was able to do suturing i helped with splinting and casting as well as wound care a lot of the things that i saw were dog bites, animal bites, and also like lacerations. So I remember this guy came because he stepped on something at the beach and he had this huge cut on his foot. So things like that, that's in blue track. I really liked blue track or blue just because I'm a very kinesthetic learner. So I like to do things with my hands. If you can imagine doing procedures, that's basically how I learn best. So this week or my second week i got a lot more comfortable with the supply closet and knowing what types of materials i need to do certain procedures and things like that during my second week i remember still going in to see the patients with a provider because i didn't really know what to expect in terms of interviewing a patient on my own. I think my program really drilled into us how to interview a patient, but it was so cut and dry. It's like you want to ask this and you want to go in this order. But as a student and as a practicing clinician, there are certain parts of the medical interview that you leave out and parts that you want to hit in order to tailor it to what the patient's coming in for. So for example, the patient's coming in for abdominal pain, you're not going to go through the entire ROS for nystagmus and stuff like that because that's just not pertinent. So as a student, we learn to systematically go through all of these questions, but then when you're practicing in the ER and things are happening at such a fast pace and you need to get through all these patients, it's not ideal to be asking them these things if they're not pertinent to what they're coming in for. That's what I had to really see other clinicians do the second week. And then leading into the third week when I was started to go into red, that's when I started seeing patients on my own and I would go back to the attending or the PA or resident that I was working with and I would give them 
my presentation of what I saw the patient and how I interpreted their illness to be. So that was my third week. I started getting a lot more comfortable seeing patients on my own, also trying to build up my presentation skills. And that's something that comes with time. So obviously I got chewed out by the attendings that I was presenting to, but I know it's all in good heart because they are trying to help me. They are trying to build my skills for presentations. And needless to say, all the interns also are not perfect at it. And they've been there for a couple of years. So I just try to keep that in mind. That's going to come with time and it's okay because this is my first rotation. So I would expect me to stumble across the, the way. My fourth week I was in pediatrics and by now I was very comfortable seeing patients on my own. I could very well help out with procedures like IVs, phlebotomy, and I was able to present still with a little bit of nervousness but more confidence than before and this i remember this week this was when i started getting my differentials more close to what the person was coming in for that was like a little bit of a confidence booster for me because all throughout my rotation i would come out from seeing a patient and literally not know what to order because i didn't like I was just asking them a bunch of questions, but I wasn't interpreting and analyzing what they were telling me. So when I would come out of the room, I would literally have no idea what I wanted to do. My fourth week was when I started to internalize everything that the patients were telling me and then understand like, if they're coming in for this, I wanna make sure that they don't have this, this or that because they could potentially die from that. So I'm gonna order these labs, this imaging and stuff like that. My fifth week, is when i was in purple and here i also saw a patient who was of higher acuity which means that they were a little bit more sick and i was able to help them i was able to present to the fellow that i was working with and we got her into the or in a good amount of time and i think that was also another confidence booster for me because I was able to recognize that this patient was ill and they needed to be seen and consulted with someone else right away. And I think that's very important as a student. It's to know when you're stepping into a room if that patient is number one, sick or not sick, and then also if they need emergent care because you as a student, like you're there to learn, you're there to work on your presentation skills, work on your interviewing skills, see as much as you can. But if you're interviewing a patient that needs critical care or more care than others, you need to let your preceptor know because they will just assume that like that patient is stable when they are actually not. And that week, I remember I just I saw a lot and I was able to help out with wound care as well and I got very comfortable with wound care. My sixth week which was my last week, I just finished a couple days ago. I tried to focus this week more on procedures because I knew this was like the last week in the ED so I wanted to make sure I was getting all my IVs, my Foley's, my NG tubes, all of those things done because I didn't know in my future rotations if I would be able to see those types of things. So I just wanted to make sure that I was getting most of my procedures done in the emergency department. I would follow these nurses and just introduce myself and be like, I'm a PA student, can I come watch you? And some of them will say like, do you wanna help me do it? Or like, do you wanna do it? And I'll say, yeah, I wanna do it, but can you watch me? Or like, can you just um, guide me step by step? And most of them will say yes. It's a win-win for them and you get to learn as well. So it doesn't hurt to ask. So throughout my rotation, I would slowly ask the person that I was working with if I could write their HPIs. And by the last week, they were allowing me to sit down with them and like type out their HPI physical exam, ROS, as well as their MDM, which stands for medical decision making which is basically where you summarize why you're ordering certain things and what you're trying to rule out. So that's a summary of all my six weeks and what I did, what I tried to focus on. Now I'm gonna talk about a little bit more of how my everyday schedule went. 
So every day I would work with a different attending slash resident or PA and being an introvert, I think that really drained my social battery because I would have to introduce myself to a new person every single day and it was just a lot to put myself out there. So I think that factored in to why I was number one so exhausted but also I didn't really look forward to the environment that I was going into every day because I knew that I was going to have to push myself to be more outgoing. I had three shifts a week that were all 12 hours. Sometimes I would stay for a little bit longer if I was seeing a patient. But other than that, I was there for pretty much 12 hours a day. And I would eat before I got there and then eat once at the hospital just because I didn't want to come home so late and eat. As you can imagine in the ER, you're seeing so many patients and it's very hard to keep track of all of them. So what I did was I took a piece of copy paper and I just folded it into quarters. So I would have one like square and then I would just keep writing as I went down for the rest of my day to keep track of all the patients I was seeing because for my school in particular, they make us um, log all the patients we see, as well as their ethnicity, sex, what their chief complaint is, their ICD codes, and their encounter. What kind of encounter was it? Was it emergent, acute, chronic, preventative, like things like that. So just having this little piece of paper helped me, number one, with my presentations, but it also was a way or means for me to keep track of the patients that I was seeing. Besides that, I carried two or three other things with me, and I would consider carrying them if you're going to the ED because it could be helpful, but also for your other rotations. The two things that I always have in my, my jacket pocket or my scrubs pocket was like this Maxwell Quick Medical Reference. This... Um, like I said, comes with your AAPA membership and it basically has everything you ever need. And then I also have this like little notebook that I would just write things attendings would tell me. So if I was um, looking on the EMR and someone's coming in for a head injury, I would look up Canadian CT scan rules or... I think it's called New Orleans CT scan. There's also Canadian C-spine, the Nexus criteria. And then um, for pediatrics, there's PCARN. So all of these criteria, I would just write them down. I would look them up and I would write down any things I wanted to look up when I got home. And then lastly, the thing that I always had and I found super helpful in the ER was my shears. And you can imagine why you're going to use this. Number one, if someone's in a trauma, like you need to cut their clothes, you need your shears. Also, if um, someone's coming in with bandages from the EMS and you need to see their wound, you can cut it off rather than like ripping apart the bandage. So I found this neat trick where you put the shears on this like card reel. I think that's what this would be called. And then I clip this onto my coat or my pants. And then when I need my shears, I'll pull them out, use them, and then just slide them back into my pocket. And that way I don't lose my pair of shears because they're always attached to this card reel. All right, my last tip that I wanted to tell you guys was my lifesaver for this rotation. And it is these compression socks. You could literally get any compression sock you can find. I found these on Amazon for a pack of eight. I think it was $15.00. And I'm telling you, they saved my life because I don't think I've ever stood that much of my life before I started this rotation. But wearing them has made my like standing on my feet so much more comfortable. And I've also put these Dr. Soul insoles into my sneakers and they are life changing. Like I don't think I could ever wear a shoe without an insole anymore. So those are the two things that I would highly suggest you get for your rotations because they really saved my life and i just don't want spider veins or or any of that so i'm preventing them from the start 
All right, so now I'm gonna give you a little bit of like a rating of what I thought about my emergency rotation. Like I said, I'm an introvert and it was so exhausting for me to kind of introduce myself every day. And I realized that this is gonna be an ongoing thing with all of my rotations. So it's something that I'm just gonna have to deal with. But I would say that out of a five, my emergency rotation was probably a four out of five. Most of the attendings that I worked with were really nice and really wanted to teach me. I understand that as a resident, you're busy and also as an attending, you're also busy because you're seeing all the patients. But I truly respected and appreciated all the attendings that took the time to just talk to me, even if it was about one patient or like one x-ray that I was looking at, because it really did make me feel like I was part of the team. And in that sense, I was able to learn and really clinically see how things are done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions about your ED rotation, definitely let me know down below. Um, I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about. But of course, if you have other questions, I would gladly answer them. Um, as for my EOR, it is tomorrow, so I haven't taken it yet. But once I figure out how I'm studying for my EORs, I will definitely make a video about how I'm going about with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye!